Welcome to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management, a weekly conversation with area leaders about how to persevere during uncertain times. Now, here's your host, Gary Shorman. Hi, everyone. Welcome again to Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times with a special guest who I know you know this lady. Uh, she's a rock star, was a rock star for downtown Hayes, and now is a rock star for the Department of Commerce. It's Sarah Bloom, the Community Development Specialist for the Kansas Department of Commerce. Uh, Sarah, welcome to our program. Hey, thanks for having me, Gary. Great to hey, be here. Hey, you know what? Congratulations. And you were just named Kansas Department of Commerce 2023 Employee of the Year. Actually, employee, yeah. they named two, but you were yeah. right there oh. after only a couple of years in. Congratulations on that. Thank you so much. It was quite the surprise and, and quite the honor and um, just makes me want to work harder for the state of Kansas. Well, you took over a position that really helps not only communities like Hayes, but communities across the state. Tell us a little bit about your job. Yeah. So again, my official title is community development specialist. I wear a lot of hats with that title, but primarily I'm covering the entire state of Kansas and I'm working to go into communities, identify their assets, look at opportunities, brainstorm with them some projects and improvements that they'd like to see. And then once we've done that brainstorming and we've identified those opportunities, then the fun part happens where I get to connect them to the resources across the state, not only at Commerce, but, um, you know, foundations like Danji Hansen and like the Schmidt Foundation, connect them to those resources to make those projects a reality. And so it's a really rewarding job for me to get to go in and, and just be a small part of pushing these Kansas communities forward. You know, sir, it sounds like you've done a really nice job of that to get the award. So I know it was a surprise for you to do it, but out of all the state of Kansas and the Department of Commerce employees, what may be came to the top for the work you do in this area that caused you to be one of the employees of the year? Yeah, uh, it's a great question. And I got to talk with Lieutenant Governor David Toland a little bit um, after receiving my award. He's the one that uh, alerted me that I was going to receive that. And there was a really great um, nomination filled out for me just talking about my dedication to the position, my dedication to my coworkers. Um, Toland also mentioned, uh, I do everything with passion and with urgency, but I also do it with excellence. And to be able to go into these communities and make sure that they feel heard and not pushed aside and that we are taking even the smallest problems and, and treating them as, as something that's urgent, that needs to be to be fixed, to be remedied, to to be helped. Uh, that's that's where that's where I shine. That's where I love brainstorming and I love going in and helping. And that that was that, it. <laughs> there's a lot of those out there. Well, and and having that passion means a lot um, mm -hmm. when you're looking at getting a project done. There's a lot of those things out there that that need passion and need help. Any stand out since you started? Oh gosh. Well, so part of my role is also coordinating two tax credit programs. So specifically the community service program tax credits is a program that allows nonprofits across the state to utilize state tax credits to boost their fundraising efforts. So if they have large projects and they just need a little bit of help to start that fundraising, to start asking donors to help them cross the finish line to get those projects done, though these tax credits can help. It's a very competitive program. I love coordinating it again because there are so many great projects happening across the state. And it's one of the few programs that is offered to nonprofits for really anything that they can dream up that benefits their community. So we have done everything from child care centers to parks to housing for individuals with developmental and um, with disabilities. Um, you name it, this project can help. Um, you know, even right here in Western Kansas, we had two re awardees recently announced. Options is going to be using it to build um, a, a shelter in the Colby area. The Hayes Arts Council is going to be using it to renovate their Main Street property. So I, there are literally 
hundreds of examples of nonprofits using those tax credits to benefit their communities. And to be a small part of that and to get to see how they're impacting their communities is, is huge. And I love going there, seeing their projects, um, helping them, uh, again, just move forward, move their community forward through all of these different things. But it, it touches almost every aspect of, of the state, whether it's childcare, housing, youth job development, uh, crime prevention, it covers all of those things. Now, do you have to travel a lot for this? Does it cover the state or do you, do you cover a specific area of the state? No, I cover the whole state and it. my weeks look very different every week. It's I go where I'm needed and some weeks I don't travel at all. And some weeks I'm traveling two or three times a day. Uh, Hayes is great because I'm about four hours within almost every other point in the state. So I can typically go and have several meetings and spend several hours in a community and still be home by dinner time, if not bedtime with my kiddos. So it works great being here, uh, fairly centrally located here in Hayes. But, um, you know, tonight I'll be traveling to Ashland, which is about two and a half hours south of Hayes and, and speaking at their quarterly chamber dinner and letting them know how commerce is there to support them. So it all is very dependent. My weeks look very different. Well, I, you know, that sort of thing can be fun. It can be a challenge. You just said, well, Hayes is sort of in the middle. It really is across our state. You can see where you can go to Southwest Kansas to Northeast Kansas. There are people in the state that would say Hayes is Western Kansas. Um, <laughs> it, it's not that on the map, but, but that's what they say. Has that been a challenge at all being based here, knowing that uh, a lot of the Department of Commerce activity takes place in Topeka? Um, I don't know that it's a, a challenge. We Commerce is doing a really great job of making efforts across the state. And we have a lot of Commerce employees that live in Hayes, that live in Western Kansas. And so I think the challenge on, on my part is making sure that the people on the Western side of the state realize that. Because I think a lot of times you're right, that it is viewed as just uh, the Eastern side of the state because we've got offices in Topeka. But we have office, we have people living in Hayes, we have people living in Plainville, we have li people living in in South uh, West Kansas as well. So there are a lot, and then you tie in all the Kansas work employees that are also Commerce. There's a lot of us. There are a lot of employees in Western Kansas working for the benefit of Western Kansas. And so I think that's that's where I see the challenge is making sure that everyone knows that, recognizes that, and feels comfortable coming to us and asking for help. Uh, and knowing that they're going to be heard. Sarah, we're going to take a break here and come back and talk a little bit about what's on the plate for 2024. Believe it or not, we're almost halfway through the year. And <laughs> yeah. uh, what you're looking at for next year, and then maybe go back and look, there's a couple project downtown Hayes that turned out really pretty cool. We'll talk about those. The, hold on. Sarah Bloom's our guest here. She is with the Department of Commerce in Kansas, a community development specialist covering the entire state. Back with more after this. The most successful investors are those that can keep their emotions in check and take a longer term view at what portfolios will be worth three to five years down the road. I'd say that's the most important in determining what investor outcomes are. Market corrections will continue in the future. We've seen many of them over the years, only to see equity prices rise higher, and that'll be the case in the future. Worth Wealth Management, enhancing lives and strengthening families. Welcome back to Forward Ever, leading in challenging times and one of our new leaders across the state uh, covering the state of Kansas for the Department of Commerce is Sarah Bloom, used to be with Downtown Hayes. We all know some of the projects were there, including the pavilion that has to be one of those cool things you look back and say, boy, that was something that was really fun to do. Uh, Sarah, do you, do you drive by that and go and make, does that make your heart go pity patter when you drive by that? All the time. I We still drive by all the time. My kids and I have a brick there, you know, in the commemorative wall, but, you know, Bruise on the Bricks was last week and it was great seeing all, hundreds of people under the pavilion celebrating that event. Uh, so yeah, absolutely. A uh, huge accomplishment. And um, I look forward to other developments happening in downtown. But yeah, that was, that was a long time coming for downtown Hayes and I was excited to be a part of it. You know, you, any of these things that you put in, it's not just usually one person. But it can take one person who is a leader, and I believe you probably find that out even more as you travel around the state. There's one person that wants to get something done. If you can find that person, 
or that person finds you, it's a lot easier to get projects done because you have somebody that is that person with passion and a driving force to do that. As you look ahead in 24 and 25, what will you be looking for and, and what is really available through the Department of Commerce that uh, can really help those projects go forward? Oh, that's a tough. So the Department of Commerce has an abundance of resources, whether that's programs or people. So as far as what, what we're looking for, we just, gosh, I'm in a lot of communities. Typically the communities that I'm in, they have reached out to us and let us know that they want us to come visit, that they want us to see their buildings, that they want us to see their projects reach out to us. That, that's, I guess that's what I'm looking for is for you to reach out to us. We're going to try to reach out to you, but there are a lot of communities in the state of Kansas. And it, it's easier if we know that you are ready for us, that you want us, even if you don't feel like you're ready for us, invite us in any way. The, we can't help unless we know what you need. And so we would love to just visit with you even if it's just a, a quick coffee to introduce ourselves to you. I would love to do that. Um, I, I'm going to give a shout out to Kelly Hansen, who is a grassroots uh, specialist for the Office of Rural Prosperity, living in Plainville, Kansas, you know, just 20 minutes north of us. She's doing the same thing. She's trying to get into communities in Western Kansas. And, and there's two of them at ORP. One covers Western Kansas, one covers Eastern Kansas. So reach out, we're going to be able to connect you to people that can, can push you forward in whatever project you're leaning towards, whether that's housing, whether that's um, community development, placemaking, childcare, we have resources. We'd love to visit with you and learn about what you're doing and connect you to the, the proper people and programs that, that are gonna help you achieve your goals. But I, again, am, am just very passionate about seeing communities move forward. And so however that looks for you, even if it's, again, just having a coffee with us getting to know us, learning what we can offer, or if you already have a project in mind and you need help researching grants, we can do that. Uh, Commerce has a grant writer on staff that is willing to help you. We have so many resources that we could just I mean, we could talk all day about all the resources that are available at Commerce. So just reach out. That's what I'm looking for. Well, not everybody needs every one of those things, but they might need right. something. On your website, if they go to the website, is there a picture of Sarah Bloom? They can click on that and connect <laughs> them with you. How does, how does that work on the website? Yes. Yeah. We have some really cool tools on the website. So one, if you go to the website, the first one of the first things you'll see is at the top right, there's a bright yellow circle. And if you click that, the first thing you're going to see is initiatives and incentives. You can click that tool and you can say, I'm a nonprofit working on housing, show me the grants. And it will filter all of them down and show you exactly what you're eligible for. Very, very cool. You can also use our search tool. You can search me by name. My email and phone number will pop up. And that's that's the case for any commerce employee across the state. Uh, you can click on our website and go to community development and find me. You can click on ORP and find Kelly. The website is pretty user friendly. It's brand. Uh, it's pretty new and it looks great. It works really well. But yeah, top right initiatives and incentives or just use that search tool. Look me up, Sarah without an H bloom, and I will be happy to connect with you. Well, that's the that's the cool part of this because from big projects like the micro factory, that was a big project. Uh, yeah, Department supported of by Kansas Commerce. Yeah, yeah, supported by the Department of Commerce, and you know, it's such a nice crowd out there when they had the ribbon cutting. That's a big project, but not all of them are that big, and I think some of them will be smaller projects from smaller communities. And so, I I don't think that you're limited by size, either too big or too small. Am I correct? Absolutely. Yeah, we have programs for all sizes. You know, the tax credits I mentioned are available to any nonprofit across the state, regardless of your community size. And actually, depending on your community size, if you're a rural community under 15,000 in this case, you get a 70% credit. If you're above that, it's a 50% credit. Um, Office of Rural Prosperity is specifically looking for opportunities for rural communities. In fact, they're researching some new grant opportunities right now for communities that are less than 5,000 and who have never received a grant before. We're researching how, do we can, how we can work with them 
and build capacities in those communities that maybe just don't have that leader to, to write the applications? How can we empower them to do so. Uh, we work with a lot of really great partners, one of them being um, the, the group formerly known as Kansas Pride and the, the Kansas Research Extension. They're putting together an event for 2025 called Connecting Entrepreneurial Communities. They are asking for the host cities to be 10,000 in population or less. Those applications are due by August 1st. We at Commerce are partnering with other people, other organizations, to ensure that we are looking at communities of all sizes, but also giving the rural communities the same opportunities as those urban communities. So yeah, absolutely, any size, please reach out. Sarah, it's, it's always fun talking to you because you do come across with that passion. This is the last question, but it, it's <laughs> probably more personal in nature, but we talk about leadership a lot on this program. Where did you come, where did you build? Who were your mentors? What's, I'm not even sure how I asked the question, but how did you develop the passion for not only Kansas, but helping businesses like you do? Oh, gosh. Um, I have been involved in community development for almost as long as I can remember now. Um, I would say my leadership skills started to build even as young as, as 10, 11, 12 when I was doing 4-H. I would not be as gifted of a, a speaker or a presenter had I not you know, been giving those 4-H speeches every year. So I credit my parents completely with that for uh, throwing me in that and, and pushing me to excel in there. But, you know, Fort Hayes, of course, the communications degree that I have through Fort Hayes State University was huge, had some excellent professors, was able to explore a lot of options in, in print journalism and in uh, radio journalism, TV journalism. Uh, and then from there, just jumping in and getting as much experience. And I've been very blessed with people mm -hmm. who uh, have given me a lot of rope to, to make some mistakes and, and mentor me along the way. But uh, Marla Canfield specifically, uh, when I was with Legend Senior Living, um, saw my potential and and allowed me to to move up the ladder there. And Oh my gosh, an amazing DHCC board, of course, when you have 13 bosses, 12 bosses, that makes a big difference. <laughs> uh, lots of coffees, lots of lunch meetings, and, and a lot of different leadership styles, which uh, I could glean from, and they provided resources and books and, and advice when I needed it. So I could talk all day about that as well, but it started at 4-H and, and developed, DHCC, of course, was, was huge, especially in the helping businesses develop. Um, I've never been a, a business owner. My husband has his own business, uh, which I assist with a little bit, but it's really his. And through DHCC, you know, I was able to help stores learn marketing strategies, learn what point of sale systems were best for them, um, help them develop business plans, look for buildings. That's really where I got to dive headfirst into business development and now I just get to continue to, to glean off of that and help not only communities, but businesses. And again, just tie them to the many, many resources that we have at Commerce. Well, Sarah, we're proud of you and the work you've done. Congratulations on being employee of the year for the Department of Commerce and, and look forward to more great things happening. And, and as, as those things develop, not only in our area, but others across the state, I uh, like to share those through Hayes Post and our radio stations as well. But thanks for being here on the program and taking the time with us today. Absolutely. Thanks, Gary. Appreciate your time. Sarah Bloom, the Community Development Specialist for the Department of Commerce and the employee of one of the employees of the year in 2023. So congratulations there and thank you for listening to Forward Ever Leading in Challenging Times. Our program is brought to you by Worth Wealth Management where you can live with confidence. I'm Gary Shorman. Thanks for joining us for Forward Ever, Leading in Challenging Times, presented by Worth Wealth Management. Join us right here next week for another episode with host Gary Shorman. Until then, remember to move forward ever, backward never.